This video reinforces what you taught yourself in the Infinite Series Lab, specifically on the meaning of converge and diverge, what it means to say this infinite series converges or diverges. First, let's get some, termination out, some terminology out of the way. Infinite series looks like this, numbers with plus signs between them and no end to it, and a pattern so you can predict the next term, like 25. You want to be very careful you use the word term correctly. This is a term. 4 is a term. 9 is a term. That's the first term in this series. So this is the... And in these videos you can pause and then I'll keep talking because I know you can pause it so I won't pause. But you can pause and fill in the blanks and check yourself. So this would be the fourth term in this series. So this is the series that's a term, that's a term, that's a term. You want to be very careful because you can talk about what the terms do and you can talk about what the series does. Those are two different ideas. Now, sigma notation means we can express this whole series this way with a sigma sign meaning summation, or here it really kind of means series, not summation. You tell what letter you're using as the index and where it starts, and then you say, you put the infinity symbol here saying that there's no end to it, and then you write the pattern. In this case, the pattern would be n squared. All right. In general, when we talk about series, the books will often use this a with a subscript n. It might be clearer if it wrote a as a function of n. That might be clearer to you, but this is the standard way to write it. So there's our sigma notation. Series usually start with n equals 0 or n equals 1, but they don't have to. This means each term depends on its position in the series, its index, its location. And that can often be written out like this. All of this is used on the AP test, this notation. Zero term, the first term, the second term, etc. That's the standard letters to use when you're talking about series in general. The goal for this first section of our study of series, and this will take a week or more, more than a week, and you'll have a test on it. The goal is really one basic goal. I give you a series and you tell me whether it what? Blank or blank. And the answer is converges or diverges. That's really the goal for the first half of our study of series. And there are 10 basic convergence tests uh, to see whether this happens. You're not going to have to learn all 10, but all 10 are in your book. Okay, why would you, why would this be important? This is important. We use series a lot, and I won't go into all the ways we use series, but you could look that up. But series is one of the most important inventions in the history of mathematics. But a series is only useful if it does what? Again, pause the video. If it converges, of course. A series that diverges is absolutely useless to us. An infinite series that diverges has no use at all. Only series that converge are useful. All right, so let's look at what this means. I want you to have an intuitive feel for what it means and not just memorize uh, some pattern of letters for it. So we use this analogy like the lab. Think of each term like a step you take. So we're going to write them horizontally. A series converges if I can draw a finish line, and no matter how many steps you write or take, you will never cross that finish line. That's what we mean when we say a series converges. That's it, nothing else. It can be said or written mathematically, but this is the basic idea. Okay? If I can't do that, if no matter which line I draw, no matter how, even if I draw it a million miles away, if eventually you will cross it, then we say that the series diverges. Here's some examples. This is very similar to the lab, so I'll go very quickly. Series with growing terms, series with constant terms, series with shrinking terms. They get smaller, but do not approach zero. So in the blank for each one, write whether it converges or diverges. And of course, for every single one of these, these all diverge. There's no way I can draw a finish line that you can't cross with any of these. Now this is the one that people often get wrong because they hear the words shrinking and they think, oh, okay, the terms are shrinking. Maybe it could converge, but they're not shrinking to zero. So notice, compare this series and this series. Here the terms are shrinking, but they're not approaching zero. In fact, they're approaching two. So that means every step of this series is bigger than every step of this series. So if this series diverges, because if you take two foot steps over and over again, you'll cross any finish line, then this one has to diverge too. Don't get misled by the word shrinking. That just means the steps are getting smaller, but they're still all, in this case, staying above the value or length two feet. So of course, if this series diverges, this will diverge. And here's the notation for you. 
the individual terms, see that's not a series, there's no sigma, that does not mean series, that means the individual term, the nth term, that approaches 2 as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, right? 3, 2.5, here's the first term, the second term, the third or n equals 3 term, the fourth or n equals 4 term, and as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the individual terms approach 2. See how that's all different from talking about the series as a whole or the sum. We're talking about the individual terms. All right, let's look at the one in a different color here in blue. Here's the case where the terms are getting smaller and they're approaching 0. When this happens, see if you can fill in the blank. All right, if you wrote converge, that's not true. It doesn't prove it converges. What you say here is maybe. That means you don't know anything yet. This is letting the series through the first test, but it has to undergo another test before we can prove whether it converges or diverges. I make the analogy, this is like the initial thing that the TSA does to you at the airport, which is just look at you. And if up here, these are the cases where the TSA sees a gun on your hip or in your hand, sees a gun in your hand, you immediately get arrested and kicked out. You're, the series diverges. If they, this is where they don't see the gun in your hand, right? That doesn't automatically mean you're free to get on the plane. They might find the gun in your purse, right? They might find it hidden on you. So all this can say is maybe. This is the TSA visible gun test. This rules you out. This does not rule you in. It just means we have to apply more tests to the series to see if it converges, right? Here's the conclusion. If the individual terms don't shrink towards zero, as n gets bigger and bigger. So if they don't shrink towards zero, that means these series, then the series does what? And the answer is the series diverges. If the terms don't shrink to zero, notice that they have to shrink to zero to pass this first test. So if they don't shrink to zero, then we know for a fact the series diverges, it's useless, and you're done, stop, write diverge, and there's nothing more you can do with that series. Okay, so that often leads students to a question, wait, if the series terms do shrink to zero. Doesn't that automatically prove it converges? How is it possible for the terms, the steps, to get shorter and shorter and shorter and get closer and closer to zero, but the series diverges? How is that even possible? And there's a way to show that, uh, I think, very simply and intuitively. Think of it first. The general idea is each time you take a step, you're adding more distance. And the terms are shrinking now. We're only looking at these series with the maybe. They might converge. The terms have to shrink faster than you're adding. That's the basic idea. You keep adding. The bad thing is you're taking more steps and adding more distance. The good thing is the steps are getting smaller. Well, if that second good thing happens faster than the first bad thing, then the series will converge. To think of this, now this was not in the lab. Um, instead of thinking horizontally, now we're going to think vertically. Think of each term like it's a block, like you're a child playing with blocks and you're going to stack them. The series will converge when you make this stack. Each time you take a stack, like here's the first block, this add the second block, the third, the fourth, you're making a vertical stack. The series will converge if no matter how high, no matter how many blocks you put on the stack, no matter how many blocks you add, no matter, no matter how many terms, if I can make a ceiling that the stack never, never reaches. So it's the same idea we had before with the finish line, but you turn it vertically. So instead of finish line, you talk about a ceiling. All right, we'll look at two examples of that. Series number one, series number two. You can probably guess by the colors what each one of them is going to do. Here's series number one. It's loosely based on this series, where each term is 1 over the square root of n. All right, here the blocks stack vertically. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like that. So there's the first term, the second term, the third term. And just to give you a preview, this would be called the first partial sum, this distance the second partial sum, this distance the third partial sum. See, that's not a partial sum includes all the terms up to that point, right? So now if we graph, that means s for sum, the nth partial sum. If we graph what we have so far, when n equals 1, we only have a stack this high. When n equals 2, we have a stack this high. n equals 3, we have a stack this high. And n equals 4, we have a stack this high. And this graph is supposed to look like this. This is approximately the y equals square root of n graph. Right? Does can you draw a ceiling that this graph will never cross? Can you does this graph have a horizontal asymptote is another way of looking at it? And the answer is no. 
There's no possible ceiling. You know that square root graph very well. There's no possible ceiling to this graph. So it's possible for the, see the terms are shrinking. They're getting closer and closer to zero. They're shrinking. Um, this, which, this series would shrink. The terms would get closer and closer to zero, but they don't shrink fast enough. So if you graph their partial sums, you get this kind of graph. No possible ceiling, so this series what? This ceiling, series diverges. Okay, then come on over and look at this one. This is loosely based on the series 1 over n squared. Here are the individual terms stacked vertically like building blocks. First block, second block, second term, third term. So this would be the first partial sum would be this high. Second partial sum would be this high. Third would be this high. And fourth would be this high. Okay, and what this series does, this is like y equals 2 minus 1 over n. So see the shape? It has a horizontal asymptote. It has a ceiling. We even know what that ceiling would be from looking at this. We see that the ceiling would be 2. So you can draw a ceiling that the stack never reaches. So we just say this series does what? Converges.